what's come out in the last few days uh, that Patrick Peterson then actually dispelled decisively during his podcast. Get us up to speed on that. Yeah, there was an anonymous source from, I think it was a blog or something. I don't even know the, the site, if it was legitimate or not, saying that barring something unforeseen, Patrick Peterson and the Cardinals were going to part ways. And Patrick Peterson came out on his own podcast, which it's nice when players have podcasts because they address this, these sort of <laughs> things. And Brian McFadden asked him if there was any validity to it. And he said it was just a dirty rumor. He hasn't even, you know, kind of exchanged offers with the Cardinals yet. It's the Super Bowl just ended. They're not there yet. So I think we're still in that holding pattern where Patrick Peterson wants to come back. And would it shock me if they're far apart in negotiations and he ultimately leaves? I mean, that wouldn't shock me at all. But it, it also would be realistic for him to come back because they're close enough in terms where eventually they negotiate it and work it out. So I think everybody's waiting to see what happens, but there's, there's no substantive movement yet. I mean, that was a report that was debunked by Patrick Peterson himself. So I think once we get closer to free agency, we'll have an idea. It's, it's an interesting question for Steve Kime because I think we can agree that Patrick Peterson is not the all pro cornerback that he was in his prime, but if you let him go, what, what are you going to do with number one cornerback? There's no easy replacement on the roster is there somebody else in free agency you like that you're willing to give money to? Are you going to risk it in the draft on a young guy? Even if it's a first round pick, you don't know how, how those guys are going to perform. So I think it's a big question mark with Patrick Peterson and really both cornerback spots. I, I do think that Patrick was smart to say what he did. I'm not saying it's not true. I think it, it probably is true. They haven't made anything because if you're Patrick Peterson, a couple of things popped to mind when he said all this. I think one, you don't want to close any of your avenues. You don't want to lose your leverage. And the more teams that could be interested in them, including the Cardinals, the better for him. But I always kind of felt like, I feel like this is a little bit of a Calais Campbell situation, meaning the Cardinals have a number in mind. Patrick probably doesn't think that that's a high enough number. If And I don't know if they've actually thrown anything out there. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. But I do think that Patrick probably knows that there's a situation where he's going to need to field some offers to get a good sense of what his market value is. I do think he'll go back to the Cardinals and say, this is what my market value is. You know, this is the kind of stuff I want. And at this point, it's a little too early in the process to really know, uh, especially since the we still don't have any uh, concrete uh news yet on what the salary cap is going to be. So I think that's a big part of this. And I think a lot of players, including Patrick, are probably going to have to wrap their head around what the market's going to be like, not just Patrick himself on what he's could earn now, but just where the market is going to be for so many people. And with all due respect to Patrick, um, they're in a position where he's not going to be the first cornerback off the board probably I saw pro football focus had him as like the 13th best free agent quarter uh, cornerback on the market I don't believe that especially when they had Richard Sherman number two I don't see how that might figure out I don't know if that was based on their grades this year whatever it was doesn't matter point being that I, I think that he's going to have to wrap his head around what he could be owed and I think ultimately he wants to keep this door open because a, I do think he would like to remain in, in Arizona if he can. And B, he wants to make sure that all his markets are, are still available. And you certainly don't want to close any doors now. And if they haven't really talked numbers, which they probably haven't, because I think it is going to have to get a lot closer. And I do think there's going to have to be some things out there. And um, it, But this, this whole thing is, is going to be super interesting. And I do feel, and you guys can argue with me if you'd like, but does it not feel a little bit like, I just feel like given everything we heard when he wanted to be traded and kind of some of the things that he said over the years, I feel like Patrick has done a good job, especially for this situation, but I feel like he's been a lot more muted uh, or low key about this contract than I thought he would ever be. I thought he'd be a lot more demonstrative about wanting a big deal, about having earned a big deal. And I feel like he, he's certainly not going back. I mean, if you listen to everything he said on his podcast, he talked about what his resume is. He thinks he deserves money, but I don't feel like he's banging on the table for it. Like he kind of understands 
the situation he is. Now, I could just be reading that wrong. Maybe his agent is telling him, you need to slow play this a little bit or don't do anything in the media and he's listening. But I just feel like I thought Patrick was going to be a little bit more out there in terms of being a little bit more upset that he didn't have a contract offer out there, maybe getting the money he wants. And I think that ultimately could serve him well if, if, these, if the Cardinals and he still have a chance to come together. That's an astute observation, but do you think it's because he's been there and done that with the supposed trade demand a few years ago that obviously flew back on him in the wrong way, ended up resulting in a lot of negative coverage and fan reaction? So perhaps he, he already touched that hot burner and got, <laughs> got stung, right? And he's, he's not about to do that again. And, and if he's going to maintain relations with the Cardinals front office and decision makers – the less he makes it public and he sort of demands like that, then better the odds are they would be willing to include him on future rosters. I would presume it makes it easier if he's uh, completely in and, and a team player in that way. I, I do find it hard to believe that there are that many cornerbacks that are going to be on the market who actually would be more desirable than Patrick Peterson. Now I get it. He's not the pro bowler. He's not the all pro type of corner. He was, but guess what? He's still the number one corner on the Arizona Cardinals roster. And, and if you're going to bring up Calais Campbell, well, Cardinals invested a first round pick in Calais's replacement. His name was Robert Kandichi. That didn't work out. And so I've been on board since midseason that the Cardinals are going round one cornerback. And I'm still saying that. I still think, regardless of Patrick Peterson's situation, they go corner at number 16 overall. And then hopefully they go linebacker in the second round and they move on and they go maybe wide receiver in third round. That's just me. But it is far <laughs> from a guarantee. And right now the depth chart is so thin, Kyle, that you wonder if he has more leverage than we ever thought he did going into the assault season. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think there's definitely two ways to look at it. You can, you can use Calais Campbell as a great comp, a guy who – got a, a pretty sizable contract from a different team and played well for several years after the age of 30. And the guy that came to my mind on the opposite side is Darnell Dockett, who the Cardinals let go to San Francisco. I think he either got cut in the preseason or barely played and then retired and his, the end of his career came quickly. So there's, there's a lot of different things that can happen to players in their thirties and a cornerback, especially, I mean, you've got to be quick twitch. You've got to hang with all these physical freak wide receivers and when that goes downhill your physical skills they can erode quickly so the Cardinals really have to determine if Patrick Peterson can still be that number one corner and what you're going to pay him because the last thing you want to do is give him 10 million dollars a year and him slip even more next season and then you have two below average corners possibly depending on what you do on the other side because that's a recipe for disaster defensively so I think it's a, a very tricky evaluation and one they have to nail because if you if you have a bad contract at corner that's not easy to get out of you have to play him but obviously if he doesn't hold up well against wide receivers you're going to see it game in and game out and you just don't have a lot of depth at cornerback because you pay the starters a lot of money and then you kind of fill in behind them and hope somebody can fill in for a game or two if needed but if your corners aren't strong you're you're kind of in trouble defensively so i think a lot depends on the evaluation first and foremost and then what patrick wants but i do feel like he, I agree with Darren. Like he realizes that he's not 27 years old anymore in the prime, a guy that's going to get a four year deal for 15 million, 16 million a year. I think he realizes what his age is, that his skills have declined a little bit and he knows he's not going to get top of the market money. Now the question is, can he get second tier cornerback money? And if so, does that come from the Cardinals? Quick aside on docket. Uh, I saw him on Facebook the other day and he's still working out. And that dude, he, he doesn't look quite as bulky as he did as a defensive lineman. Maybe he's a linebacker now, but oh my God, I would not want to like, I mean, he still looks like he could throw on the shoulder pads and crack some skulls. I always love Dave Pash's line about Doc. He looks like he's wearing pads when he isn't wearing pads, especially his legs. He looks like he's wearing thigh pads. It's just th those legs are just enormous. And, uh, yeah, although Doc had the, the knee injury. Remember, he went down in training yeah, camp. Yeah, he did. Never. And, that, and that, was a, that was a big part. And, and again, yeah. I, that, that's all true. But again, he was frustrated because they wanted him to take a pay cut and he didn't want to do it. And then 
you start opening it up. And again, winding this back to Patrick is, you know, Patrick's in a totally different situation. He's still a solid cornerback in this league, no matter what. So regardless of the money, somebody he, he's going to be playing. Now he, he said in his podcast, he'd like to play another six years. We'll, we'll see if he's got another six years in him, especially a cornerback that can be tough. Um, maybe Jonathan Joseph told him a couple things that, that can give him some hints on how to play that long. But, but again, you, you, you know, are you willing to, if you want to play six more years, are you willing to do it the last two or three or four, uh, for minimum salaries, you know? What's remarkable with me is there are two corners in the NFL this year that shut down DK Metcalf, Jalen Ramsey and Patrick Peterson. Those are the only guys who really shut down DK Metcalf. And I think when Pat, gets frustrated this is just my own assessment it's when it's scheme when there's a lot of zone when he's not able to do what i think he feels he does best one-on-one mano a mano travel and shadow that guy that number one receiver that's when he's at his best and i think that's when he gets fired up and plays his best is in those situations i just don't know if it isn't a bigger guy like a dk metcalf you know even though he runs a ridiculous 40 He's just a matchup liability against some of those quick twitch guys that you'll see most of the weeks. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how realistic it is for him to shadow number ones. I think it definitely depends on the, the talent and kind of the traits of the opposing wide receiver. He obviously loves doing it. He loves playing press man coverage, but it's, it's because he's always been this unbelievable athlete that can mirror the best runners and route runners and wide receivers in the world like it's crazy the amount of natural talent Patrick Peterson has but once you're not able to keep up in a foot race then there's a lot of issues at corner because you can't play the press man as much you have to back up and give them a little cushion and then the shorter routes are easier so I just feel like cornerback is such a slippery slope where once you're not as athletic as the other guy it's a lot harder even if you do have mental gains you still need that physical kind of threshold to surpass in order to be a good corner. And I, I still think Patrick is there. I think we are so spoiled by him being unbelievable against Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson. Like he would shut down DeAndre Hopkins for a game and we would just shrug. Like looking back, that's amazing that he did all that stuff. And now he wins some and loses some and people are mad when he loses. And it's not, it's not a indictment on him because that's where he's at in his career. Uh, but I think it's a reality. And, and now we just have to figure out what he's going to be in 2020 because as good as he's been in the past it doesn't matter anymore obviously all that matters is how he plays moving forward yeah you know we we look and, and Jim Omohundra our producer points something out you know this is a guy who let's face it earlier in the year how many times did he kind of more or less complain you know I, I think Patrick would agree with that assessment about how teams wouldn't just go at him straight that they'd use the crossers and the picks to take him out and then at the end of the year he brought up that subject again but rather than complain a lot about it, it was more about, I've got to get better at covering those. Now, I don't know how you do that necessarily when maybe your speed isn't there. And, and it's funny, listening to some of these guys acknowledge some of that a little bit more is, I think it's a big deal. I think it's a big deal to listen to it. I mean, I, I listened to Tyron Matthew last week. Uh, and when I was asking him and people were asking him about you know his career and I asked him about, Arizona and stuff and um, you know I think Tyron is still a little not a lot upset probably that the way things went down in Arizona but at the same time he acknowledges that he'd had two knee injuries and teams were scared off from him and he even admits now as you get older and you can't run as fast or jump as high you have to get better in the mental game and to hear somebody like him admit that his skills aren't physically what they once were to hear Patrick acknowledge it, however, perhaps slight or in a different way, that the physical skills aren't one thing, what they once were. I mean, to me, that's a giant deal for a professional athlete. That's hard for those guys to do. So I, I do give them credit when they are willing to put it out there publicly. I think a sobering moment for Pat last season was when Buda Baker, in his words, got hawked by DK Metcalf. Because you know who else got blasted by on that full length of the field run was Patrick Peterson. DK Metcalf flew right by Pat P. And Pat P. 
sort of, you know, and Gallo Sumer after the game said, yeah, I, I didn't have those young, fresh <laughs> legs to keep up with that guy. And, and so I think there was a slow realization during the course of the season. You'd agree, Kyle? Yeah, and I, I think, like Darren said, it's it's nice that Patrick acknowledged it because that surprised me a little bit, knowing his personality where he's always kind of said he's Superman and he's not affected by anything and he, he feels like he's at the top of his game. So for him to kind of acknowledge that reality was uh, impressive to me. And I think when you bring up a guy like Tyree Matthew, I think his position just works so much better where if he has a little physical decline, Tyree Matthew's game is built so much on – mental awareness and knowing how to jump into in the lanes and and knowing where the quarterback's going to go with the ball because he's kind of this free floating center field safety where Patrick Peterson a lot of times I'm mano a mano against your best receiver I've got no safety help and I just have to hold up and run down the field as fast as I can I just think it's a different type of position and that's why I think if if Patrick Peterson can continue to do it in these next couple of years that's going to be as impressive to me as what he was doing earlier in his career because the the physical skills might not be there anymore but if he can know what's coming and and stay on wide receivers consistently that that's a testament to what he's done mentally to get to that point in his career one and just to kind of wrap a bow on this overall and it, it we're talking about in this case Patrick Peterson but this this works for everybody and I've heard Michael Bidwell talk about this I've, I've heard Steve Kai mention this this is not a secret you know teams when they give out contracts, contract extensions, that's for what you they think you can be or still be. And players oftentimes want to get a contract that's based on what they've accomplished. And those are completely at odds. Um, you know, for what he has done, I understand why Patrick feels like he should get paid a certain amount or a player feels he should get a certain amount. Teams are looking this completely forward thinking. So it, it does, it's ultimately going to come down to, as we all kind of know, what the Cardinals feel like he can be and, and whether they can be a happy medium when it comes to talking to Patrick Peterson.